Is the VZ55 better with the autoloader than with the single shot? Well, my opinion on that is yes, and it is worth it. But now, let's have a look at the stats, and I want you to actually have a look at the stats. Let's do a little exercise here. Tell me down in the comments, what do all of these stats mean to you? What can the vehicle do? What can the vehicle not do? Because remember, no matter how much I tell you about statistics, if you don't start understanding and learning them yourself, you will never get good at the game. So pause the video, write your comment, especially if you don't have the vehicle yet, think about how it could be played, and then we're gonna have a look at the armor now, and then I'm gonna play it later. The armor of the vehicle is still the same, it's very good. I mean, the lower plate is massive and a weak spot, but that is true for every tank. The upper plate is impenetrable at pretty much any angle unless you're firing straight down at it, which is never gonna happen. The size is a 100mm, 105mm up here, so you can side scrape quite well up to about 20 degrees. Then you're gonna have a problem with getting penned by high penetration premium rounds, so watch out for that. 20 degrees is about what you can ally itself, and you wanna watch out for this plate, because if you turn the vehicle to the side, this plate is going to get weaker and weaker as you further turn to the side. So watch out for that one. Try to hide it. Try to wiggle the vehicle back and forth. Also, try to wiggle the vehicle back and forth to avoid getting shot in the very weak cupola on top of the turret, which you can't hide when you use 7 degrees of gun depression either. So watch out for that. You can also get penned right here but next to the gun mantle, but that is pretty much only for very, very accurate guns. The rest of the turret is very well armored, especially with these extra plates right here, you're also going to have some protection on the side, so when you're facing this vehicle from the side, try to shoot at the hull rather than the turret, because the hull is going to be a lot thinner than the turret, and obviously if you are in this vehicle, 7 degrees of gun depression is good enough to go hull down to play ridge lines, but always watch out, keep moving, and uh, ideally you have 4 seconds into clip, if you can quickly hide between shells, do that, if you don't need to, then don't, uh, but if you have the opportunity, simply drive behind cover real quick and then fire the sh second shot right after. That is also going to be quite useful to do. Four seconds intra clip isn't great, but it's just just at the border of where uh, you can stay out in the open, peaked uh, for the second shell. But again, the cupola is the biggest weak spot, uh, so watch out for that. We see the bottom of the hull is curved inwards, which means don't don't try to shoot down here. Uh, shoot at the upper part of the armor right here, uh, because obviously that down is going to be curved inwards and the, the better the angle on a plate the better the armor so the armor on the vehicle still good two shots that's what it always should have had and that is what two shots will get you right there obviously the interclip is a bit long but it be shorter it probably wouldn't be fair for the enemy team to have this high alpha damage and that short of reloads i think the gun is perfectly well balanced now obviously the armor and the mobility they're still the same and they're good enough i mean especially the armor on the turret except for the cupola is good so the only thing you have to do now is position yourself properly and make sure that you have four seconds to also get in that second clip because one of the downsides of two shot autoloaders that it's a little bit less so with other autoloaders is that when you fire one shell and you can't fire the other one, you have to make a tough decision. Do you keep that one shell or do you go for the full reload and reload one shell for the price of two? Which isn't really all that nice, but most of the time you can get around that problem. And now, if you look at the minimap, I can very easily get out of this position right here because the 777 is over there. There isn't really much team support over there. Sure, there is two tank destroyers blocking the forward approach, but if I would have stayed where I was, the 777 and others could have simply just shot at me so you always want to keep the map in mind and reposition accordingly and that's what I, exactly what i'm doing here it's gonna go around put two shots into this guy and then disappear again just if you trade with this vehicle you need three clips to already be above average damage three clips that's all you're gonna need to fire from this gun and i think finding three opportunities to unload an entire clip every battle is not that hard once you start reading the maps, start reading the teams. Again here, one shot goes out. And I want to back off here. Obviously going to take a shot from the object. Not going to avoid that. But now I know that two of the enemies are in our spawn. Two are in front of me. There's only one that is missing. But that one is insignificant to my current amount of hit points. So if he would pop up, I'd still be fine. Basically, that's another point. Also play according to hit points. If you have a lot of hit points and the enemy team is losing... You can take a lot more risks, and if you have 
no, low hit points or if your team is losing. Obviously, if you're losing, you want to preserve hit points. If your team is winning very convincingly, you also want to spend hit points uh, to trade favorable to get more damage before the team obviously finishes off the enemy team because otherwise you're not going to get a damage. And here is the bad chat. Just look at that. Just look at that. That is... If you can do that, you're officially good at the game. I mean, obviously, that was just me guessing, but if you're very good at guessing, that's all you need to get good at Blitz, right? If you can guess the enemy's position, if you can guess the enemy's actions, then you're already gonna be two, three steps ahead of them, because you can outplay them at their own game. So, what I'm gonna do here is simply... I have 1,100 hit points, and we're four versus three. So, winning here is pretty much guaranteed, and I don't know how you think about this, but I personally don't really care about surviving at the end of the battle uh, too much if I can get an extra shot for it, right? I'd rather die and get an extra shot than not get the shot and live. That's just me, uh, because the game's supposed to be fun. Nobody cares about your survival rate, but you do care about if you're having fun or not. So what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to push this card right here. 5,000 damage is what I want. 5,000 damage is what I'm going to get. So this vehicle works very lovely, and if you just play it, like I've demonstrated right in this battle. Just find yourself an opportunity. Two shells, retreat. Two shells, retreat. If you can find yourself a couple of those opportunities, 5,000 damage is going to be relatively easy, especially also if you have a 183 that just peeks up and sits out in the open. And isn't it just the most lovely thing in the World of Tanks Blitz to see a 183 die right at the start of the battle? I don't think there is a better feeling than achieving that in World of Tanks Blitz. And obviously, that's already 970 damage. Two more clips, and we're at pretty much 2.7, 2.8k damage, which is more than average in a vehicle like this one. That's all you need. So what I'm going to do now, because I know the 183 is no longer a threat, I know exactly what the WZ is. I have no idea what the 2 state version 4 is, but I'm not bothered by that right now, uh, because if I trade 1,000 damage for the Object 2670, I still won. So at this point, I'm not really too bothered with that. But there is now the object up there. He's spotted. And now I know I can simply just go for this uh, E100 without the 113, for example, being able to do anything about it because he's behind the rock. So that's another important thing here. Map control, understand where the enemies are. What can they do? What enemy can attack you? What enemy can't attack you? And uh, right now, this game is already won. One minute and 20 seconds. It's over, basically. And I've already done 2,000 damage right here. And now, this is what I mean, where you spend hit points to gain damage, right? Because if now, this match is going to be over pretty quickly. If I don't go in there, and I'm going to take the fight, and I do the damage, I'm going to end up with a still solid, but uh, quite disappointing 2,000 damage. What I'm going to do now, is I'm going to push forward. Because I know, I can out-trade that WZ. Obviously, I have to wait the 4 seconds, but he can't go anywhere in those 4 seconds, so I'll be fine anyway. And then... Obviously, there is a leopard I'm going to have to watch out for in the back, so I'm going to take my second shot. I know that he cannot reload in the time it takes me to go back. So, I'm simply going to do that. 268 puts a shot into me, which is not very nice. But again, this match is already won, so it doesn't really matter whether I trade my hit points here away or not. I can still take another shot from 268, so that's not really my problem right now. You always have to be careful with how you work your hit points. And now, three enemies left right here. And again... 3,400 damage simply by trading one shell for one clip. And I wouldn't have to do that. But I'm simply doing it because I, I can. Just to demonstrate how good this auto loader is if you play it properly. And now here, the Progetto. Obviously, I have another two shells available. I'm not even going to bother going into uh, the sniper mode here. I'm just going to put two shells onto him, and that's 4,000 damage. Right there. Again, find yourself the opportunities. It's not a fast vehicle. But it is fast enough. As you can see right here, it's been three minutes. I went basically to the enemy spawn and back to the middle. It is mobile enough to traverse the battlefield quite nicely. And that obviously was a screw up. But this vehicle, definitely get it. It's great. 